Good afternoon. Today I want to present to you a series, The History of the Ancient Egypt and its neighbors. We are going to cover about 3,000 years, and we will not, not only learn something about Egypt history, but also the history of its neighbors, and we will also learn about um, God's history, how he fulfilled his sovereign counsel. Um, so here we have a small legend. Um, this is an example slide of my presentation. And um, so not all dynasties are important. Um, the dynasties that I mentioned here are all the most important dynasties. And then um, on the right side, you can um, see, um, for example, the buildings or uh, some uh, maps. So for example, here are all the important buildings listed that you, one should know. And then I have marked um, in italic and in bold um, the important facts that we need to know in, un, in order to understand um, Egyptian history, so uh, with um, how the one um, is connected to the other. So let's start right away into the introduction. So Egyptian history started with, uh, started with uh, the god of Ptah. Ptah was the first existing god in, of Egypt. So from him, um, all the names of Egypt came and all the gods were created. So Ptah is the god of creation and crafting. So he is the creator god and the giver of life. And his son was the sun god. The sun god, the god of dawn and the god of twilight. And he, in turn, um, made two children, Shu and Tefnut. So Atum Re, the sun god, is the keeper of life. And then Shu and Tefnut make two other children, Geb and Nut. And Shu and Tefnut are the god of air and the god of fire. And the god of air, of fire, and the god of earth, Geb, and the god of, N Nut, and, and the god of heaven, Nut, they are the four main elements. So from Atum Re, the sun, the four main elements of the earth came. And then the world was created when Gab and Nut made four children, Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Nephthys. And Osiris, um, because Osiris was the most uh, popular one among these four, um, Gab made Osiris the first king of Egypt. But Seth um, had envy to Osiris because he wanted to be the king, so he killed Osiris. And in this way, Osiris became the god of afterlife and death. So all Egyptian people believed that everybody who died went to Osiris' um, kingdom. So Seth wanted to be king, but Osiris was, um, so this god was married to Isis, and Isis had a son from Osiris, Horus, and therefore Osiris' kingship was saved. And Seth could not be, uh, become the king, and Horus, the descendant, became the king. And this is the reason we will see that later, why all the Egyptian kings had Horus um, as one of their names. And Horus was the god of sky and the god of light. So in this way, the Egyptian king from Osiris to Horus and his kingdom were created. So of course, this is not um, the true story of how Egypt started, but that is how the Egyptians believed in ancient Egypt, how their um, kingdom started. And all this, what, I've, what I have told you now, is written on the Shabaka stone um, of Memphitic theology. So um, in truth, there are several beliefs how the Egyptian kingdom was created, but this is uh, one of the ways um, how it's told until today and how it is written on this stone. So to come to the real stuff, um, so what is the etymology? What does Egypt mean? Egypt um, actually comes um, from the city Memphis um, because Memphis was the capital city of Egypt. And the Egyptians believed this, that Memphis was created by Ptah. Um, and we see the connection between Egypt and M Memphis when looking at the name um, Egyptos. This is Greek. And when we translate it into um, ancient Egyptian language, it means Hüvdka Ptah. 
And this means mansion of the spirit of Ptah. Um, so, and this is, um, and mansion of the spirit of Ptah um, means kind of the house of Ptah. And this was Memphis, the first city that um, the god Ptah um, created when he created the whole world. And now we want to look at why um, Egypt at all could become such a superpower or um, an important country for 3,000 years of world history. So when we look at the map of uh, North Africa here, we see um, that everywhere here, so today's Egypt, Sudan, this is all hostile to life. Um, people cannot live in the desert. But there is this long river, um, the Nile River. Um, the Nile River um, is like a large oasis in the desert in Egypt, about 1,200 1, kilometers long. And it's um, really like a small, narrow stri stripe that flows through the desert. So around the Nile, there are like three to four kilometers around the Nile um, which, uh, where people can live. But then in, um, out of that, there is no life possible. But only around the Nile, there is um, life possible. And another factor is um, that um, in uh, Egypt, so when the Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea, there is this Nile River's delta. Delta. We also know this um, from the Bible as uh, Goshen. This is around 25,000 square kilometers, and um, it is the third largest river delta in the whole world, um, after the um, Amazonas Delta in Brazil and the Ganges Delta in India. And this is also um, a very um, fruit, uh, fruitful area. And what we also have to know when we talk about Egyptian history are six cataracts. Um, the six cataracts can also be called white water rapids, so where the, um, the speed of the Nile water flowing um, suddenly fastens. So these were very dangerous um, locations for ships um, when they went through these cataracts. Um, but they are very important um, as landmarks um, because the Egyptian historians always say the Egyptian soldiers, they conquered the area until the first or the second or the third cataract. Um, so they are really important landmarks. So I already talked about the Nile and um, the, what was special about the Nile was um, the Nile flooding. Um, and the Nile flooding um, caused an about 50 times higher amount of water in the rainy season than in the, uh, compared to the normal times. Um, so looking at the geography here, here again we have the desert, um, not really where people can live. We have here desert at the east, the Sinai um, Peninsula is also not really good to live because of many um, rocks and also desert. And then here we also have, um, in the south uh, east, we also have many mountains. <laughs> um, but uh, the Nile was always um, yeah, kind of uh, the one that saved the people's life because um, we need to take a look at uh, from where the Nile comes from. Um, it has two sources. I'm uh, here from Uganda, from um, the Victoria Lake, and then here um, from the volcanic area in Eth Ethiopia. And then um, here in around Uganda, here in Central Africa, there are many rainforests. And these rainforests are, um, they have, they are so, they're, each year there's a rain, rain time um, where it rains really much. And all this rain from the rain season flows into the Nile River and then up to, um, up to Sudan and then to Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. So this is the reason why, there's, uh, why the Nile has, uh, in the Nile there's so much water that can be used, for example, for agriculture. And then the second factor, so we all know that um, uh, in volcanic areas from uh, the volcanoes, there's uh, very much um, that makes the land really fruitful. That is why when a volcano erupts, um, then after the eruption, there are many, um, uh, many uh, flowers and woods um, growing. And this is also the reason why the Nile makes, uh, around the Nile, there's such a fruitful, um, yeah, a fruitful um, area because 
uh, when the monsoon comes, so the monsoon uh, comes here from the east, then all this fruitful uh, material here is um, driven into the Nile River and also flows into Egypt. So because of the monsoon rain and the tropical rainy season, um, the Nile, um, the area around the Nile is very fruitful and that is what the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian people recognized and uh, could use and control the water flow through their agricultural fields um, so that they had a very productive and profitable harvest um, even two times a year. And this is also one of the reasons why the Nile was um, such a good location where uh, one of the first high cultures could develop. <laughs> 